In the last episode, we ended off by making all of this armor, all of these tools, and all of these weapons with this insane villager setup that I've been working on for ages. But it's finally done, and because it's done, we have all the enchantments to do stuff like this. But this armor setup isn't completely finished. I have all of the armor, and it's all fully enchanted, but we're missing one very key item, and that is Elytra, because I haven't beaten the Ender Dragon yet. So in today's episode, that is what we're going to go do. We're going to go kill the Ender Dragon, get some Elytra, and get some Shulker Boxes. And then I will have all of the stuff to be fully kitted out with every single tool I need for Minecraft. However, there's a little bit of a problem. I have all the armor and weapons I need. In fact, I'm probably a little bit overkill, but I don't have some very key ingredients to fighting the Ender Dragon, and that is Eyes of Ender and Blaze Powder. If we go look at my chest right now, I have nine Ender Pearls, which isn't bad, and uh, one singular Blaze Powder, which is really not that much. And if I want to find the Stronghold and also get into the end and activate the portal, I'm going to need a whole lot more than this, so I have to go hunting. First up is blazes, which are very easy. I have popped on over to the local nether fortress, and now I just have to sit at the spawner and kill blazes with the brand new weapons that I made. And that is three blaze rods from one. I guess that's the magic of looting three. I really love having fully enchanted stuff. It's just so nice. And there we go, 44 blaze rods. And now we have to do ender pearls, which is a little bit harder because endermen don't really spawn anywhere to an insane degree except for the end, which if I could get there, we wouldn't need ender pearls. So instead we're gonna go ahead and do piglin trading for them because I have just a little bit of gold and I can get even more because I have some raw stuff in here. So I'm just gonna pop on over to the nether, find some piglins and trade with them until I have enough ender pearls to do whatever I need to do. There we go, I got the ender pearls. I got about a stack and six plus a whole lot of random garbage I don't need, which is completely fine, but that took quite a while. How'd Dream do this so fast again? I don't know. But anyway, we have all the stuff we need to go find the stronghold, so let's get going. Okay, so I've got my ender pearls, my blaze powder. I suppose I can craft a couple of those into Eyes of Ender. I've got all my tools, weapons, armor, plenty of arrows, got uh, some the food actually. Eh, it's fine. So let's go ahead and head on over to the end, which is that way. Okay, let's go. Oh, the first Eye of Ender just went backwards, so I think I'm pretty much here. It should be somewhere under this hill. And it just went straight down, so we are probably directly on top of the stronghold right now, although there's a cave system here, so I might actually try to get down there naturally a little bit before I just start tunneling directly downwards. Well, partially because I don't really want to tunnel down. That's probably unsafe, being one of the rules of Minecraft, but also, you know, maybe this is easier. Actually. No, this was a dead end. I'm just going to dig straight down. Oh, that looks like a stronghold to me. Okay, we made it. And now I just have to actually find the portal, which is always way more difficult than I think it should be. And it seems like I actually managed to find a very small little bit of stronghold there. But I'm just going to explore around until I find it, which is probably going to take forever because it just always does. Actually, that wasn't that bad. I found the uh, portal room, got rid of that, and of course we'd get absolutely zero eyes of ender, but that's why I brought a billion of them. So I need all, there's a silver fist somewhere in here. It's gonna knock me into lava. Okay, I don't, I don't see it. I'm still terrified though. Though I do appreciate these rooms are fully lit up, so there's no monsters in here, but I need a full uh, 12 of these things, which just means nine, because I already have three. And that is the ender portal fully complete. Uh, I don't really have a bed, so I'm kind of just going to hope I don't die, which might be a really dumb thing to do. But, you know, we should be fine. It's not like the ender dragon fight is that hard, right? Yeah, yeah, no, that was, that was really easy. I'm a little overprepared for the ender dragon fight. And also, I just don't really know how to edit fights, but that is dead. So now... It's time to go ender raiding, because, uh, yeah, we should get a portal somewhere. There it is, and I have plenty of ender pearls left, although I think I'm going to gather a couple more before I head into the out islands. Also, 65 levels. Nice. I always love how much experience the ender dragon gives you, which means all my armor is all healed up because it all has mending on it, which is very nice for, you know, fighting shulkers and such. 
Okay, I got a couple more ender pearls before realizing that there are in fact ender pearls in the end islands and that I don't really need to worry about. And give me an ancient city like right off the bat, please. Okay, no, that's it, fine because it's kind of what I expected, but now I'm just going to go ahead and kind of throw ender pearls about until I find one, which hopefully won't take this, uh, that long because uh, last time I did this it was like almost instant, so uh, we'll see if we're that lucky this time, which uh, probably won't be because it just never happens, but you know, maybe, I'll keep my hopes up. <laughs> no city so far, but there are about a billion Endermen chasing me, and I am very scared. I also found another one of these portals, so that's pretty cool. You can make a Wither Rose farm there, but I have more pressing concerns at the moment, like the sheer amount of Endermen that are attacking me right now. Is that another portal? It is. That's cool. Also, I'm gonna die. Okay. We're good, oh my god. I should have brought more food, shouldn't I? I forgot that the end is, like, dangerous. Actually, never mind. In addition to forgetting this place is dangerous, I forgot that there's actually food here. It just, you know, teleports you around a little bit, but it's actually not a bad food source from my understanding, so uh, we're all good. I'm not going back to the overworld, and no one can make me. Now I just have to actually find a, a uh, end city, which, uh, still no luck with. <laughs> Is that little bit of purple what I think it is? It is indeed. That's an end island. It looks like... Nope, that's not a boat. Never mind. Uh, we really need an end update because that took forever and was very boring. And I also don't really have a way to get there. So we're going to see if my ender pearl skills are up to snuff. First, that island. Nope, nope. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, okay. Well, that's that. Guess I'm making new armor. Okay. <laughs> I should have just done the safe thing, shouldn't I? Yeah, just maybe. Okay, I recrafted all the armor, all the tools. I had to go netherite mining again. But luckily, a lot of the stuff I made in the last episode didn't get burnt because it was in my ender chest. And now I just have to re-enchant all of this, which is why I'm in the village. So let's do it. And that is the full set of netherite armor back with us again and no longer destroyed in the void. Or I guess it's just a new set realistically. And now we can move on to the weapons and tools, which is a little bit harder because there's more of them and they are much more unique than the armor. And there we go. All of the tools are back with us. We have the sword, the bow, the pickaxe, the axe, and the shovel. And it didn't even take that long. That villager setup really is magic, essentially. And... Huh, we're ready to go back to the end, but I'm going to be more careful this time, and instead of just chucking ender pearls everywhere, I'm going to bring them just in case. I'm actually going to build bridges so that there's a little bit less of a chance of me falling in the void and having to do all that again, because I really don't want to have to go mining. The enchanting stuff is fine, but like 11 netherite ingots isn't... I don't know, that actually is enough to do this one more time, so I can die one more time. After that, no more deaths because I don't want to have to deal with the consequences of it. Okay, we're back in the end after a quite long journey to get back to the stronghold because, well, I didn't make any nether portal to it and I still haven't, so hopefully I don't die again and, uh... Yeah, I have no idea which way I went, so I'm just gonna kind of choose a direction and try and find an end city. It's probably not gonna be the same one, though. Never mind, I'm pretty sure I actually did find the same one here, and uh, like I said earlier, I'm going to be careful this time so I don't lose my stuff, and I'm just going to bridge over to it instead of trying to use an ender pearl because it is a little bit too far. Although I have to say, this does not feel safer. I know that like the Enderman won't attack me unless I look at them, but just I'm just worried that some vengeful Enderman is just going to come and knock me off of this bridge because doing a one block wide bridge is always terrifying no matter the circumstance especially if it's over the void. I suppose more likely is the shulker from over there is going to manage to hit me, but I suppose that would levitate me so I wouldn't fall. But either way, this is terrifying and I want it to be over, but at least we are almost to an end city and I'm pretty sure, yeah, this one has a boat, so we will be getting an elytra. Okay, we're here and now the slaughtering of a billion shulkers begins. I just get to do this for a while. Seven shulker shells later, and I've made it to the first loot room, and we get to see how bad this loot is. Ooh, unbreaking three diamond pickaxe. Definitely, uh, very, very useful. Oh, 
sharpness for knockback iron sword now that that is a contender although we did get a saddle which is actually kind of good because you can't get them anywhere else and most importantly we got an ender chest which will be really useful later next loot room let's see if this one's any better i guess that just means like diamond horse armor or something but no that's definite oh definitely worse curse of vanishing pickaxe and four emeralds absolutely beautiful and i will take the ender chest again don't really need a third one, but, you know, I like ender chests, so I'll take it. No more loot rooms, but I believe I have cleared the entire end city, except the most important part, the boat. Which, of course, has the elytra, and that's what I'm really after, although getting 17 shulker shells is pretty good, I think. I don't really know how uh, good, like, what loot drops are good for shulkers, but I feel like 17 is a lot. I can definitely get some shulker boxes with that, so that is absolutely amazing. And now it's time to get the elytra. There we go. I got the elytra, and that feels good. It has been a long time without wings in this world, so I'm very happy to have them. And we get more loot that's bad. Oh, unbreaking three curse of vanishing diamond chest plate. That's it's pretty horrible. And yeah, the tools are also just bad. I do find it funny. I guess it is very good loot for how uh, good the rest of the loot is in the game. But like in terms of actual things I want, it's not very high up there. And I have actually left one shulker who should stop hitting itself because I might want to use it for a shulker farm at some point just because those are really useful and is really the only way to get a truly infinite source of shulker shells so i've left this guy alive to sit there until i come collect him for a farm and now i get to do the most fun part of any end busting expedition which is getting home and this is where the ender chest comes in because what i tend to do with uh getting home from an end busting expedition is uh just this, I put all of my stuff, excluding the uh, really quite bad loot that you get from these things, in an ender chest. And then we just go ahead and jump in the void. And I believe that is everything I care about. We'll keep the extra iron, I guess, for no real reason. And now, with uh, nothing I really care about in my inventory, actually the bread's more valuable than the iron, let's be honest, we jump into the void. Or not, or I can miss and it's a little bit less climactic, but that works too. And now we get to do the second fun step of that that is apparently a reoccurring thing because I did the last time I went end busting too, and that is realize you don't have an ender chest placed anywhere to get all that stuff back. Now, I do have obsidian and uh, plays rods, but I don't actually have any ender pearls, so I'm just gonna grab some gold and go trade with some piglins real quick, and it shouldn't be too much of an issue. <laughs> There we go, we got the ender pearls uh, from the piglins, and now we have an ender chest back, and all of my stuff is back with us. Okay, that was a very successful end trip. We got 19 shulker shells and, of course, an elytra, which is the most important part. I'm going to go ahead and craft these things up into shulker boxes, and then we have probably the two most useful items in the entire game. Shulker boxes crafted, and I don't really have a use for them right now, so I'm just going to put them in my ender chest, but I am sure I'll have something to do with them at some point, because like I said, they are very useful. And now that we have those two things, I think we're going to move on to making the elytra actually useful, because in its current state, it's fine, you know, if you get somewhere high up, you can do a little bit of gliding. But other than that, it's not very helpful. Realistically, for the elytra to be as powerful as it can be, we need fireworks. And that pretty much means I need gunpowder, because theoretically I have sugarcane, even though I don't actually. I have a farm for it somewhere, so that will be all fine. However, I don't have a lot of gunpowder. And that's something I kind of need to fix. Currently, I have about a stack 50, which will get me uh, about six stacks of fireworks, which is a lot and will last me a little bit, but it's not going to last me forever. So, gunpowder farm. And now the question becomes, which one do we want to make? Because create adds some options. First off is the classic. Spawn some creepers and kill them. You can make that a lot more efficient with the create mod, so it's a great choice. But the create mod also adds in two other ways to get gunpowder. One of them is the way that I currently get the gunpowder that I have in here, which is processing zinc ore. If you crush zinc into crushed zinc and then wash that crushed zinc, you have a chance of getting gunpowder, which this ore processing machine outputs into this barrel. Or right now, I think it's actually broken and it doesn't, but most of the time, 
it does. However, this is a pretty slow process and isn't really viable for a constant supply, partially because of how slow it is, and also because you need to supply the machine with zinc, which would mean needing an infinite source of zinc, which isn't possible. It's just not a renewable resource. So we can't do that one. The other one Create adds in is you can combine uh, cinder flour, which is just crushed netherrack, that's pretty easy, and harming potion. And then you get gunpowder. And harming potion requires spider eyes, which would mean a mob farm anyway, so we can't really do that one either. So we're just going to go with the classic and make a really efficient creeper killing gunpowder farm. Well, really efficient probably isn't the best word for it, but it is going to look cool because I think I'm going to put it up there on the ceiling, kind of in between those two stalactites. So the entire thing will be like hanging there and then it'll just drop creepers down to somewhere. Probably not into the water because I occasionally swim here and doing that would be detrimental to my health and also my base but they'll drop the creepers down somewhere and it'll just look really cool because the alternative is like using cats or something and I don't want to have to get cats up there so instead we're going to be using some create mod stuff to actually get the creepers out of the farm and into the water. And I've already come up with the design so let's go look at it. Like I explained pretty badly in the last clip, a normal vanilla creeper farm uses cats in the middle here to scare the creepers to the edges, because creepers are scared of cats, obviously, that makes complete sense, but I don't really want to do that because I don't want to get cats onto my ceilings. Instead, I made this design, which is a super weird shape. It was originally a circle, but that didn't really work out for a couple of reasons, but creepers spawn in the middle here, which you occasionally get to see, and then they are sucked in by that fan, like I just was for a split second, and they end up down here in the hole and then that hole will lead all the way down to the bottom where they will get eventually killed and their items collected and they'll suspense a bunch of bats but that won't really be a problem because they don't contribute to the monster limit which is in the like bottom left of this f3 menu you can see there's four and that is these four creepers and now it's zero i was really hoping one would like actually spawn right now but it's a little slow and that will be fixed with more spawning platforms because of course this is just an example so this is what we're going to build, and I guess we're just going to go build it, except there's kind of not actually enough time left in this episode to build the creeper farm, so I'm going to have to leave that until the next one. But for now, I really hope you enjoyed this one. You made a ton of progress, got Elytra, I'm super happy with that. So for now, I'll see you next time.